Diana from Adirondack Girl at Heart. I teach antique lovers how to create successful antique businesses. I do that in a number of different ways by providing all kinds of vintage and antique resources, including these videos where I share my recent vintage finds, both what I paid for each item and what I think each is worth. So let's dive in. I'm going to start with some china, some ceramics, okay? So right off the top, I have these cute little um, cow-shaped creamers. Not, not real old, I'm gonna call them vintage. Came with two little mini creamers. I'm not sure what the idea was behind needing three, but they were a dollar. They have a sticker on the bottom, H-I-C, and that stands for Harold Importing Company, something, Harold or Harry Importing Company. Um, so again, vintage, I paid a dollar for the three and I will likely sell them separately. The, the big guy for 10 to 12 and the little ones for six to eight. Picked up a, um, this is a, it's like a, <clears throat> it's a French dessert maker. Um, I will get the name of the dessert. It's, it's like creme brulee, but not creme brulee. Something where the, um, the dairy, the, the water on the dairy needs to sort of um, be able to leak out through those holes. So this is $2. I've sold smaller examples of these on Etsy. I sold a pair of them for $25, something in that range. This uh, I paid $2 for. Sometimes these come from a company in France called Apilco, A-P-I-L-S-L-C-O. This is not marked. I hope to sell it on Etsy for $20 to $25. <clears throat> I went to a local thrift store. It's in the, an, a little small Italian museum nearby, and they are open on Saturdays from something like 10 to 2, and we popped in, and they had a shelf of dishware, and it was six pieces for a dollar, so you know I had to check that out. <laughs> And I picked up three plates and a platter. This is a this is by Wedgwood. So this was um, I actually ended up getting four pieces for a dollar because I couldn't find six that I wanted. So this was a quarter, and it's made by Wedgwood. It's a building at Cornell University, which is in New York, and the other two plates also depict images from Cornell. So. I'm, I'm guessing a graduate of Cornell was uh, getting rid of their plates. In any event, um, I'm not sure how much these will sell for, but you can't pass up a Wedgwood plate for 25 cents, right? And it is pretty uh, in its own right. So that's the first plate, and here's the second plate that was a quarter. And let me grab the third one. This is a image of Ezra Cornell, the founder of, of Cornell. And this plate is by Royal Dalton, another English pottery. And so the last piece that was a quarter from that thrift shop is this restaurant ware platter. And it was made by Shenango China which is a New York, Western New York company. And I don't buy a lot of restaurant wear, although I'm gonna show you a few other pieces that I picked up recently. Um, they are selling generally well for me on, on Etsy. However, it tends to be pure white pieces, right? So this piece has a stripe. Right now on Etsy, I have a creamer, a, a larger sized creamer and hasn't gotten a lot of interest and hasn't sold yet. So it may be that things that are not pure white aren't going to do well. I'm going to try this in my antique booth first. So let me show you the other restaurant wear that I mentioned. I picked up these four um, restaurant wear mugs. If you are following me on Instagram, I did a reel, that's a short video about this find. They were 99 cents each and I think that they will sell for, I'm hoping about 30 to $35. The fact that it's a set, 
of course makes it more desirable. And these are also Shenango. And there's the Shenango mark. Um, I'm realizing that I didn't show you the marks um, on the plates. So just quickly, this is the Royal Dalton mark. Here is the Wedgwood mark. Just wanna make sure. Wedgwood okay just so you have an idea of what to look for okay two more plates that I picked up this was at an antique shop it was two dollars and I just oh my gosh I think it's so beautiful those little bunnies it was two dollars and this plate is made it was made in England but I don't know that maker's mark so I'll have to double check it I am thinking I might keep this to decorate for Easter. I don't do a ton of Easter decorating, but I may need to use it at least once. But I think that it's worth about $15 to $20 on, on Etsy is what I'm thinking and hoping. And I have a blog post, blog post planned on transferware. I'm gonna, I wanna do a post on transferware. I do have a price guide. Um, that helps you to uh, date and price transfer wear. But so when I find pieces for very, very cheap, I have been picking them up for that blog post. And I got this at the same, at the same antique shop for a dollar. And that's by Enoch Woods, another English pottery. And, um, just a beautiful blue and white little plate. When I do decide to sell it, it will probably sell for four or five dollars, not a huge amount. So how about, I'm gonna show you a couple pieces of ironstone um, that I picked up. <clears throat> this is also from the uh, Italian thrift store that's nearby. This I'm calling, this is vintage ironstone. This is in 1800s. Ironstone. This is 1900s ironstone, and this is made by Johnson Brothers in England. It's an incised mark, so I'm not sure that you can see that really well. I'm going to say like 1940s. I paid six dollars for it, and I would hope for my antique booth to get 30 to 40 dollars for that. It's like a chocolate pot, is what I would call that. It's a little taller than a teapot. And here again, newer ironstone without any mark on the bottom, but I think that they should sell well on Etsy for $18 to $22. And then another, a, a restaurant. Well, actually, I'm going to call this a, a newer American ironstone. It was $2 at a flea market. It's not marked on the bottom. And um, it has a creamier color, which uh, lets you know that it's a little bit newer and likely American. The older English pieces have a bluish tinge to them. So this should sell on Etsy for about $20. That's what they've been selling for, for me. And then here's the last piece, a little butter pat. I've been selling, I've sold three sets of butter pats with three in each set. There's a Matic mark. So this is a little bit older, turn of the century. I've been selling the sets for $31.99. So this one was 99 cents at Salvation Army and I, I don't know how I'm gonna sell it because I only have the one. I might just sell the one for $12, something like that. We'll see. Picked up this Weller <clears throat> little um, ramekin, ceramic ramekin. I sell these for about five or six dollars, but the Weller mark was really interesting to me. I hadn't, um, I, I don't come across a lot of Weller, which they are a good brand and uh, have been in business or were in business for a very long time. And cheese crocs, I have a <laughs> blog post coming up about them. This one is unmarked, American. I'm sure it was made in America and it will sell for 12 to 
the blue makes that a little more desirable than the plain brown ones. And I think this is my last ceramic. This is not old. See, it's got a new tag on the back. Um, it it was had whiskey in it. Nice, just a nice old look, marked USA on the bottom. I paid two dollars, and uh, it should sell for about twelve to fifteen in my antique booth. One of my favorite finds anytime I go out vintage shopping is the wicker wrapped bottles. This one I paid a dollar for. It needs a little, I'm gonna give it um, a, a spray wash in the kitchen sink. It's got a little surface dust on it that I think will brighten it up a little. Not that I want it bright. Uh, I just wanna get that surface dirt off. Anyway, <clears throat> paid a dollar for it. I have not sold any yet because I keep them all, but my feeling is that it would sell for 20 to 25 dollars from my booth or possibly on etsy love that i've already taken a few photos of that with some other vintage finds i got two sets of chess pieces these are little wooden little vintage wooden chess pieces they cost two dollars and I will sell them probably from my antique booth, possibly on Etsy. I haven't researched them yet, but I'm hoping for something like $20 to $30. And the other set is a plastic set, which normally <clears throat> I wouldn't really pay a lot of attention to, but they're large and they're not heavy, but they have some weight to them. They're very well defined, and I just, I really like the look of them. They were a dollar for the set, and uh, my son and my husband really liked them because they they play, and they, they thought the larger size would be fun to play with, but um, if I was going to sell them, I think on, on eBay or Etsy, I would hopefully in the $20 to $30 range again for that set. And this is, I did a reel, an Instagram reel on this piece also. This is a wrought iron, um, possibly used in ironworks, right? Maybe to melt the iron in the cup and then to be able to pour it out. You see it's got two little spouts on either end, but a ladle of some kind with this really great hook on the back. It was a dollar. And I think it's worth about $35 to $40, possibly more. We'll have, to, we'll have to check that out. I had a really good trip at Salvation Army recently. I picked up this pair of uh, George and Martha Washington silhouettes. Is that how they would have <laughs> been on the wall? Really nice little frames. They were 99 cents each, and I think they should sell for, I would sell them as a pair, probably for 20 to $25. Also from Salvation Army, a pair of lanterns. This one I was super interested in because it had this applied handle. In other words, the handle wasn't molded with the base. I've since found out from my antique shop owner who collects lanterns that this is not actually worth a lot of money. I uh, hopefully will get $10 for it. I paid $5.99, so that was not the greatest buy. But I had wanted to learn more about lanterns. They have definitely gone down in value, just not as many collectors as there used to be. But this second one, I did a little bit better on. It was $7.99, and it's marked right up here, um, Queen Anne number two. Is it number two? Yes, number two. And if you look at the, that up on eBay, you'll see there are a number of different models. Um, I have not found mine exactly, uh, but this is the base is just this beautiful pressed glass pattern, and I think it's going to be sell from my antique shop for about fifty to sixty dollars. I will let you know how well it does later on. 
Okay, so a couple of textiles. I'm always drawn to anything from England. We lived there for a couple of years back in 20, oh, 20, 2009. Oh my gosh, is that how you say that? So this one is brand new, still has the sizing on it. It was 50 cents from the Italian <laughs> thrift store. And then this one, which is just so cute. So my kids love England. Look at that old dog. The English love their dogs. So it was also 50 cents. If I was going to sell them, I would probably sell them on Etsy where they sell pretty well. Certainly sell for more on Etsy than from my antique booth. Uh, I would list them for about $10. I may end up giving at least one, probably the dog one, to my daughter for Christmas. Maybe in her stocking, something like that. And then this piece is also, no, this is from Goodwill. This is a runner. It's a wool runner with this beautiful Pennsylvania Dutch type of um, applique. I just thought, I thought it was really stunning. It was $3.99 and I will bring it to my antique booth and probably price it at about $30. Isn't that nice? All right, how about a few books? This is really interesting. I've been selling uh, journals and composition, student composition uh, notebooks with notes and drawings and things like that on Etsy for $20 to $30. So I picked this one up. It's a kind of a faux leather cover, still very sturdy. It says obstetrics on the first page. So I think this was a doctor's notebook, possibly a, it says Walter, so probably a doctor. And it's filled with notes related to obstetrics. And it has some blank pages in the back. So I think people like to buy these to use them to create either the scrapbook in the pages so this would be the scrapbook, but then they would paste in pictures and embellishments and things, or they take the pages out and use them in scrapbooking or other uh, paper uh, crafting or cra paper art. The uh, Obviously, someone could buy it for historical reasons. Someone could buy it because they're uh, a doctor, an obstetrics doctor, and that probably this would be super interesting to them. So I paid a dollar for it, and um, I will probably list it for 25 to $30 on Etsy. So now I have a bunch of books. I, I try <laughs> as hard as I possibly can not to buy too many. I'm slightly overrun with them, but this is the Spirit of 76. <clears throat> which uh, is getting farther and farther away. I still remember celebrating the bicentennial and having a, a gown that my mother put together for me in a little mop cap, mop cap, mob cap, some kind of little white cap on my head. So I paid a dollar. I, I don't usually, very rarely will pay more than a dollar for a book. I like to get them for even less than that when I can. And I will pay more only if it's leather bound and or a title that I know will sell really quickly. So I have not researched this at all, but just my, I would price this at $10 in my antique booth at this point without checking. Probably millions of these were produced back during the bicentennial. So we'll see, we'll see about that. So a lot of you know that I have a course on little golden books that I just introduced last month and I have bought hundreds of little golden books over the, the last couple of years to in order to write that course and to have a price guide to go with it. And I'm not supposed to buy any more, <laughs> but when they cost a quarter, I just, I just, I can't resist them. I can't resist their, their colorful, beautiful um, covers. So these are all in good shape. In the past, I would buy a book if it was old, even if it had, if it was in bad shape and those don't really sell very well. These should sell for three to $5 each. I have a couple of 
cookbooks to show you. <clears throat> I have a, a, an article about collecting cookbooks and I have a price guide for cookbooks on my website. They sell very well for me from my antique booth. This one is in really decent shape and so I will price it at 15 to $20. Joy of Cooking, everyone's heard of that one. I paid a dollar for each of these. Good Housekeeping, I picked up at Goodwill for a dollar and this one is not in fantastic shape so I will price it at about 10. And the last book I'll show you is this T Toulouse Lautrec art book. Art books don't sell super fast for me, um, but the images in in this book I thought were were really nice. They're full page or almost full page. It was a dollar, <clears throat> and I will price it probably at eight. Okay, last two finds. Thanks for hanging in <laughs> today. Uh, this little painting was $4. I thought the sky especially was especially lovely and the trees also. I will price this at uh, $25 to $28. And then last find, oh, I lied. This came from the Italian thrift store. So this is what's called a German paper punch. It says, thy will be done. They are often spiritual, religious in nature. This is a paper, a paper background with holes and then the words would have been embroidered and they are a German craft. Back in the day, this would have sold for $100 to $125. It's in really decent condition. It probably, um, it's probably lightened a little bit. Uh, uh, they date to the turn of the century or before. It does have a little mark right there. But for me, I will bring it to my antique booth and price it at about 50 to $60. That's how much the values have gone down in the last 20 years. Okay, so now last find is this really nice basket. This was at Salvation Army. I've never, ever found a basket at Salvation Army. It was $4 and it is a uh, ash splint, I believe. Nice that it still has these notched handles in really good condition. You can see the notch on the side there, the checkerboard bottom, and I will price it at $50 to $60. That was a really fun find. So I hope you enjoyed seeing my vintage finds today. And I would love it if you'd give me a thumbs up, if you'd leave a comment, if you'd subscribe to my channel where so that you can see more and more vintage finds. I like to, I try to post every week. So um, I'll see you next week. And as always, happy hunting.